Hi everyone, I'm Christine. I just finished incubating 41 eggs and out of those 41 eggs out of this machine, only seven hatched. I've never had, shh, now you're safe. I have never had such a low hatch rate before and it really caused me to go in and study. Could this have been user error? Did I do everything I was supposed to do? Or is this a subpar machine that I'm going to send back? Up until now, I've had great success rate with hatching. I've had 100% hatch rate so many times that I started to think of myself as some sort of diva with hatching eggs. And then this machine came along and it humbled me really quick. But honestly, I wanna keep my diva status. And so I went on a little deep dive to understand what causes all the egg mortality. And I did egg autopsies to figure out at what stage in their development did all these embryos die. In my research, I discovered that most of egg mortality, chick mortality, egg, chick, chick egg, happens either at the very beginning stages or the very late stages. Not much death happens in the middle. And when I did egg autopsies, I found that that was very true. I had either very early on developed eggs that just quit or they were fully developed and never pipped, never hatched. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. There's a whole list of things that could go wrong during your hatching that could lead to such a poor hatch rate. But the three main culprits are gonna be your temperature, your humidity, or improper handling. And when I say improper handling, really you shouldn't be trying to incubate old eggs. They should have been stored properly while you were waiting to hatch them, which is point side down, fat side up. That's where the air sac is. Um, and really you shouldn't have very oily hands because eggs are porous and they need to remain porous in order to have proper ventilation during hatching. And, and there's a whole thing. We can do a video on handling your eggs properly to wash, to not to wash the lockdown stage, all of that. But for me, I think what happened was improper temperature and humidity. And so I don't think I trust the readout on the top of my machine very well. I ordered an extra hydrometer. Am I saying that word right? <laughs> it's one of those words that like, I've only ever seen it written. I've never heard it pronounced. And so I have nothing to imitate. So I'm just out here making up new words. But anyway, hydrometer, I should look it up. I think my humidity is actually okay, but the thermometer that's on that little machine was showing that the temperature of the incubator was way too cold. I think in my situation, what happened was um, almost 13 of the eggs that I opened up and did little egg topsies on um, was that they had started to develop, but it wasn't warm in the, in, enough in there for it to continue to develop. And so they simply um, passed away. Now here's an operator error. I should have candled again at days like 10 to 15 to make sure that everybody was continuing to develop. You do get what's called quitters occasionally and as they decompose inside that shell, bacteria can build, pressure can build, and you can infect all the rest of the eggs. So that could have been a problem. Like there was one really bad one in there and it was just, just like stuff floating around in my living. Anyway, there could have been one bad one in there that was just spreading bacteria to everybody else. And so I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure why I didn't continue to candle them. Um, because you can definitely tell days 10 through 15 that um, the, the baby is alive and well and growing. You should look for a couple of things. One, it should move in response to light. When you candle an egg, obviously dark room, bright light, you should see it moving and you should also see a very large network of veins by those days, 10 to 15. But you also should see the air sac is continuing to grow. Now on your dark eggs, even though you probably cannot see um, and they're so opaque, especially like your olive eggers or your copper morans, you can at least see that air cell um, should be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so if you mark with a little pencil around the air sac on like day five, and then compare that to day 15, there should be a noticeable difference. I'm not sure what happened. I, I definitely missed that because there were 13 in there that stopped to develop and I should have removed them from the incubator immediately. So minus one point for Christine. <laughs> But anyway, I do think that the temperature was much too low. And so you can manually raise the temperature on this machine. Um, and I've done that now for this next set of eggs that's going in. And hopefully that will solve that problem. But what if you don't have an extra thermometer? What if you don't trust any of the thermometers? Because what if, what if they're all wrong? <laughs> what if all the rulers are wrong? <laughs> to quote Phoebe Buffay. <laughs> The other way that you can tell that your temperature might be too low is if you have a very delayed hatching. If anybody is hatching on days 22, 23, or 24, then they are late hatching, probably because it wasn't warm enough in there, and so it took a little bit longer for them to develop. So look for those two things. If you've got an early embryonic death, 
or if you've got um, a very delayed hatching, probably the temperature fluctuated down in the last few days of incubation. Now, what if your temperature is too high? Here's some things that you can look for that can kind of be telltale signs that your temperature in your incubator is way too high. One, the yolk is not absorbed completely by the time that the chick is hatched. Sometimes the chick is hatched and you're like, there's something yellow attached to them. That's the yolk and they absorb that. And if it's still not attached, then that means they hatched a little bit too early. Um, just like temperatures being too cold means a late hatch, temperatures too high is an early hatch and they just weren't finished absorbing that and they need that for energy. Another sign is that they may have like red elbows on their legs, <laughs> elbows on their legs, knees. It's not an elbow, but it bends that way. So it looks like an elbow. You, you might also have some crooked toes or some splayed legs if it's too hot in there. One other thing that you can kind of see is on their belly, if they have like a black button, um, then it was just really, really hot in there when they were trying to absorb their yolk and it just dried up into a nasty black button. So those are some things to look for if it's too hot in there. But let's talk about humidity. From days one to 18, your humidity should stay around 50%. It can fluctuate a little bit, but major drastic changes is gonna be very bad for the baby. Now, in the last three days of your incubation, that's locked down. Don't pick up the egg, don't candle it, don't turn it, don't take it to Disney World. Your, temp your humidity should be around 70%. Now, if your humidity is not high enough, you're gonna create something called the shrink rack effect and that is when the inner membrane um, becomes contracted because there's not enough moisture in there for it to stay supple um, and that will cause it to shrink around the baby and it limits its mobility and really impedes its ability to be able to hatch out of the shell. If you're noticing that the, the chick is born but has bits of membrane and shell stuck to it then your humidity was not quite high enough. Also if you have a bunch of eggs that pipped but never hatched, then what happened was they were shrink wrapped during hatching and they just simply ran out of energy and they died in the shell because they just couldn't get through the membrane and they couldn't get through the egg. If your humidity is too high, it can cause the um, chick to drown inside the shell. And so if you do an egg autopsy and you open it up and the chick just looks really, really wet, or if you notice the umbilical cord is still there, then probably you should have brought your humidity down a little bit or added a little bit of ventilation to control the humidity better. As inconvenient as it was for me to have such a massive loss, it did force me into educating myself further on the ins and outs of incubation. The Kibonics has made it easy for me up to this point, but I am, like I said, I am thankful to learn some new things and hopefully I can pass that knowledge on to you guys as well. I am curious after adding another temperature and humidity readout inside the machine to make sure that it really is the right temperature and the right humidity, I am curious to see, can I fix this problem or is this just a incubator that I am gonna send back? See, right here it's telling me it's 99.5, but the internal reader is saying 97. So let's raise this up. Let's see. We shall see because honestly if it takes this much work to continually continually mess with the humidity or to help the temperature because it's fluctuating or to find out that there are some spots that are just cold and some that are hot this is not worth my time and i will just stick with my i'll just buy seven cabonics incubators <laughs> Anyhow, I hope this video has been interesting to you and we shall keep up with the progress of this next 12 eggs and we shall see how it goes. That's all for today's video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.